Hello and uh, welcome to the next video uh, of basic electrical repairing. In the last two videos, we've been trying to understand different types of joints and the reason why we need joints. We learned how to make a straight joint and how to make a tree T joint. Now, uh, these joints are not complete just when you connect the two wires together. The joints are supposed to uh, be considered as complete only when you solder those joints and finally seal them with insulation tape. So, in this video, we will try and understand how we solder these joints and uh, how we insulate them using an insulation tape. So, we have made these two joints, one is a T joint and the other one is a straight joint and you can see these two. Now, if you uh, leave it at this point, it is uh, dangerous, um, one because these joints are open, two is uh, there could be gaps in between in these joints and that is one of the reasons why we need to solder these joints. Now, through soldering what happens is any gaps in between in this wire can be sealed effectively thereby completely eliminating the risk of an electrical spark. That is the reason why the first thing that we need to do is solder these joints. Now, while soldering these joints, you must remember that the soldering is going to be applied only in the joints and not the entire open wire. Now, before you start the soldering process, we will use the emery paper or sandpaper to remove any carbon. We have already done on individual wires earlier, but it is always better to do it once again here to ensure that there is no dust in it or no carbon left out in it and that that will ensure that the soldering is proper. So, we will try and scratch off any such uh, carbon and once we have the uh, carbon removed, we will do the soldering. So, the soldering ensures that any open holes or any gaps in between are completely sealed off and this complete seal off is necessary to ensure protection of the electrical circuit from electrical sparks. So, we have cleaned up the uh, joints and uh, as you can see, we are only doing this on the joint area. Now, in order to do the soldering, we are going to be first applying the paste. The paste helps in ensuring that the soldering is applied evenly across the entire joint. Now, when we are actually doing the soldering, you will see how the paste helps us in the soldering process. So, we will apply the paste here and we will do the same on the T joint as well. Now, remember again the paste is to be applied only in the joint area, not in the other places. You do not need to apply it in the other places. Our soldering is going to happen only in the places where the joints are. So, we have applied the soldering paste. Now, we will take the soldering iron and try and uh, do the soldering process. Now, we have switched on the soldering iron already. The soldering iron is now warming up. The soldering bead should not have any carbon particles in it. Normally, this uh, tip, the soldering uh, iron tip uh, can have some left out carbon because of earlier usage. So, we will scratch it against a piece of stone to remove any such unwanted dirt or carbon particles from the tip of the soldering iron. This will ensure that the tip is clean for usage and we will be able to do the soldering very easily with that. So, we have removed any of that, we scratch it against uh, an emery paper or you can do it with a stone and remove any such dirt particles or carbon sticking on to the bit of the soldering iron. Now, for the soldering of joints here, what we will be doing is a very different process. We will not melt the soldering wire directly onto the joints. We are going to place our soldering iron on the joint. This will ensure that uh, heat is transferred to the wire and the wire heats up. Once the wire heats up, we are going to place the soldering wire on it and that will melt the soldering wire. This is a different type of soldering as you can very closely see. We are warming up the wire and once we warm up the, the joint part of it, once the joint part is hot, when you place the soldering wire on top, the soldering wire will start melting on its own. As you can see, we are not 
melting the soldering wire, we are actually transferring the heat to the soldering wire through the joint. And as you can see, once the soldering, the, the joint wire is uh, hot, it will automatically start melting as you can see. And this is where the paste comes in very handy. The paste also ensures that the soldering, melted soldering uh, wire is spread across evenly to the bottom portion of the joint also. So, the joints are warm and when we place the soldering wire, it automatically melts and ensures that the solder is intact. So, wherever you see a gap, you place the soldering wire there, warm up the joint and automatically the soldering wire will melt thereby sealing off any, those, any of those open spaces. And the paste ensures that the solder is evenly spread out across all the areas. As you can see, it is very neatly applied now. And if you see any portion that is jutting out, ensure that it is completely covered with solder. So, we have done the soldering of the straight joint. You can top it off with a little bit of uh, the soldering tip to ensure that it covers any of those spaces which are left out also. Similarly, we will try and do the soldering for the T joint as well. We have already applied the paste in it. We are going to warm up the wire now by touching the soldering iron on it. This will heat it up and once it is hot enough, we will use the soldering wire and melt it onto the joint. As you can see now, the wire is really hot and that is why the soldering wire is melting to fill any of those open spaces. So, wherever there is a gap, you need to ensure that those gaps are filled with adequate solder. So, you are warming it up and ensure that the solder is applied evenly across the entire joint. Now, there should not be any um, open points there and when we say open points, you need to ensure that there are no sharp edges either due to soldering or due to the wire connections. When you have sharp edges such as these, this can result in uh, tearing off the insulation tape later and can result in a short circuit. So, we will need to use a little more solder there to ensure that we cover up and smoothen out any of those sharp edges using the solder. So, we will go back and melt out a little more solder and cover up the rough edges or sharp edges on the joint. So, we have covered it up with solder now and spread out the solder equally across the entire joint. So, once the soldering is complete, the next step is to cover up with insulation tape. We need an insulation tape primarily to cover up all these open areas. These are open wires and are very dangerous. So, we will take the PVC insulation tape and apply it around these joints to ensure that they are completely intact and safe. So, we will uh, take a bit of uh, PVC tape. You start taping it from the insulation part and uh, start winding it around the open area. Take it around, wind it around the open area and ensure that it is uh, wound tightly around the open area. Move it on to the top end, keep turning it around and ensure that it is tightly wrapped around the entire open area. Once it is done on one end, you stretch it out. Ensure that the uh, tape goes on till the insulated part. So, try and ensure that it at least goes on until half an inch of the insulated part. This is necessary because many a times if the tape loosens out later, it is still intact and it does not reveal any of the open area. And if there are uh, any sharp edges in the joints, this can tear the PVC tape and that is the reason why we insisted that you 
solder all of those sharp edges very clearly and make them smoothen them out to ensure that the the PVC tape fits in tightly. Once you stuck it, turn it around, twist it a little to ensure that the PVC tape is stuck very clearly. Now this is intact and if you touch it from anywhere, you will not get an electric shock. We follow the same process for the straight joint also. We start from the insulated part and then keep rolling it until you are at least half inches on the other side of the insulated part. So we keep twisting it and ensure that it overlays at least about half an inch of the insulated part and then you cut it out. Once you cut it out, tighten them out by rolling them out by hand and ensure that it's stuck very well completely. Now with this kind of uh, joint, touching them will not result in any electrical uh, shock and uh, ensure this process ensures that the joints are intact and strong enough for you to be able to do it on an electrical circuit system. We do hope you have learnt about joints in this video. Keep learning. Thank you very much.